Hello and welcome to the Hypertest training series on cloud as a business. In today's video, we will cover why is there a growing interest in cloud globally? What exactly is cloud computing? The evolution of cloud? Technical concepts? And finally, some use cases. To begin with, let us understand why there is a keen interest in cloud computing technology today. According to Gartner, the public cloud market is set to grow to over 350 billion US dollars in 2022, up from 227 billion US dollars in 2019. Several top players dominate the cloud computing market. AWS, Microsoft, and Google are the top leaders in the cloud tech sphere. Cloud technology is divided into three. IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. These are terms that we will explain in detail in the later slides. To explain cloud demand and how it can help your business, let us take up SaaS for now. Software as a Service or SaaS is a cloud-based service where instead of downloading software on your desktop PC, you instead access it via an internet browser. Some examples are Gmail, Dropbox, Mailchimp, etc. It is one of the largest market segments in cloud and is projected to stay that way for the near future. Microsoft, due to its Office 365 and Teams products, dominates the SaaS market. It is followed by Salesforce and Adobe as they also have Office and productivity applications. The cloud computing market has tapped all kinds of organization sizes, enterprises, corporates, or SMBs. However, if you look at the cloud opportunity by the different organizational size, it offers ample growth options for small and medium businesses and enterprises alike. SaaS offers a quick ready-made solution for organizations, which is most favored by SMBs. As a result, while the opportunity for both is equal, the adoption rates by SMBs is much higher. Now that we've established that cloud computing can help your business in today's scenario, let us dive into what you should know about cloud computing. To begin with, what is cloud computing? NIST, the leading authority on cloud standards, defines it as a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. This means that the cloud is a service that is on-demand. That means it offers computing abilities that can be accessed as and when required with minimal human interaction, has resource pooling, which means that the computing resources are pooled together and can then serve multiple users at the same time with one hardware. Is measured, the cloud provider measures and monitors the provision of services and the user pays as per usage. Offers a broad access network. A user can access the application and its data anywhere simply with a device and a working internet connection. Is elastic. Cloud services have the ability to scale resources up or down depending on user requirements. These characteristics allow cloud computing to help organizations by reducing their costs. Cloud is a cost-effective option as it has a pay-as-you-go model with low to no maintenance requirements. Reduced time to market since there is no setup time, the go-to-market time is drastically reduced. Focus on business development. Businesses no longer need to focus on the IT infrastructure setup and management, which allows them to work on the company growth instead. Now that you have a brief idea about what cloud can do for your business, let us have a look at the important milestones in the evolution of cloud computing. 
The evolution of cloud began in the mid 1900s with mainframe computing. These mainframe computers were usually used by large organizations for bulk transactions that required high reliability. They are different from supercomputers, which are instead designed to solve specific, highly complex problems. In 1957, Professor John McCarthy of MIT introduced a concept called time sharing. It allowed multiple users to share a computing resource in allocated time slots sequentially. This worked well in an era where the computing speed was faster than the user interaction and time sharing allowed optimum usage of this computing capability by reducing the waiting times which is inherent in every user session. After time sharing, IBM introduced virtualization in the late 1970s. This was a pivotal moment as virtualization formed the basis of cloud technology. Virtualization allows virtualizing an underlying physical hardware resource and then dividing and allocating them to multiple users via instances called virtual machines. It is important to note the difference between these two concepts. Time sharing allows users to access the entire set of computing resources at a time for short intervals sequentially. Virtualization on the other hand splits and allocates the total computing resources and users get access to this on a dedicated basis. It is worthwhile to note that since each VM has its own memory mapping, any issues arising in one part of the application do not spill over and affect the other application running on a separate VM, which is not the case in a time-sharing model. Post the development of VMs or virtual machines came distributed computing. Distributed computing is the technique of linking together multiple computer servers over a network into a cluster. This is done to share data and coordinate processing power. After a certain scale, increasing the computing power of a given computing resource is more difficult than networking multiple computing resources to arrive at a desired computing power. This is the principle of the distributed computing model. One example of distributed computing is in multiplayer games where a mainframe or cluster processes the majority of the game logic and allows multiple users to connect through the server and utilize its resources. Grid computing, a concept introduced in 1997, took technology models to the next level. It carried forward from distributed computing but on a much larger and dispersed network where every participating computing resource coordinates via a common installed computer application that acts like a grid manager. The grid manager receives, breaks, allocates, consolidates and returns the final output to a given complex task. Finally, utility computing allows the deployment of cloud computing as cloud services to multiple users on consumption basis. This concept is similar to the power grid's role in electricity where consumers are charged based on usage. This model is also called pay-as-you-go or paper usage. In this module, we will explore the technical details of cloud computing. As per NIST, cloud computing can be divided into three different service models. Infrastructure as a Service or IaaS is a business model in which the infrastructure resources and storage is provided by the cloud service provider. The user does not have to manage the underlying infrastructure. Some examples of IaaS are Alibaba Cloud, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure. Platform as a Service is a cloud computing service that provides customers a platform on which to develop, run, and manage applications without maintaining the infrastructure. 
examples are one Windows Azure, Google App Engine, and AWS Elastic Beanstalk. The third one is SaaS or Software as a Service, a concept we touched upon earlier in this video. It is a cloud computing service model in which the cloud provider hosts applications and users access them online via a subscription. Examples of SaaS are Google Docs, Gmail, and Office 365. Depending on your requirement, you can choose the cloud service model most suitable for your organization. Startups and SMEs can opt for SaaS, which will help them launch applications quickly without diverting resources for IT infrastructure management. This way, they get to focus on company growth and business development. PaaS is more suitable for developers as it allows them to deploy applications quickly without having to worry about the infrastructure and the services on which these applications are developed and deployed. Lastly, enterprises can choose IaaS, which will allow them to reduce the upfront costs of infrastructure and capital investment for all their projects. Cloud services can be deployed in several ways, depending on requirement. Cloud deployment models are categorized on the basis of location, ownership, management, and operation of the infrastructure. The first type of deployment model is public cloud. Public cloud is available to everyone in the public domain. The data is created and stored on the cloud provider's infrastructure. Private cloud. In this deployment model, the infrastructure is provisioned exclusively for one organization. The manager, operator, and owner is either by the business or by the provider. Generally, private cloud is considered to be more controlled as the customer can decide where to locate the resources. On the other hand, public cloud tends to be more secure as providers generally are subjected to more third-party audits and certifications. The third type of deployment model is community cloud. Here, the infrastructure is shared by multiple organizations with similar policies and requirements. Lastly, hybrid cloud is a mix of public and private clouds. Now, how can you choose the right deployment model for your business? If your organization has unpredictable loads and needs to optimize its overall IT cost with access to internal and external uses with high availability and secured access, considering public cloud would be a good option. Public clouds allow better management of unpredictable peak loads, and the service provider can control the utilization. Organizations that have sensitive data and need a high degree of control can consider private cloud. Governments and large enterprises usually adopt these as, pri as private clouds tend to be expensive with need for higher investment. Lastly, Pick hybrid cloud for a good balance between the two deployment models. Having understood the potential of cloud technology and its details, you may want to understand if cloud is an option for you. Are you looking to move from capital to operating expenses? Do you require IT professionals to set up and manage your infrastructure? Would you like to get rid of legacy IT infrastructure? Do you want to reduce the investments in IT infrastructure and management? And do you have unpredictable workloads? If your answers to most of our questions was yes, then cloud is a great fit for you. In addition, while cloud offers many benefits for your business, there are some challenges that you should keep in mind. The top three challenges of cloud computing are cost management. As cloud is on demand, sometimes it is hard to predict the exact costs. New skill set. Managing and adapting to the cloud 
requires the IT teams to upgrade their skill sets. And last, vendor lock-in. Organizations can be logged in to a single cloud provider. In our last chapter, let's look at two use cases for cloud. Leading brand Netflix migrated to the cloud back in 2008. This transition allowed the organization to accelerate their business growth eight times, scale up operations to over 130 countries, and achieve high availability for all the subscribers. However, cloud computing is not just for enterprises. Cloud allows SMBs to focus on their business development activities without dedicating teams for IT maintenance and infrastructure. One example is Nextdoor, a private social networking services firm based out of San Francisco. Moving the application to the cloud allowed the Nextdoor team to grow globally, improve flexibility, availability, agility and security, while at the same time cutting down their costs by over 20%. With this, we conclude our video on cloud as a business. To know more about cloud and how you can use it for your own business, we have put together a small handbook for you, which can be downloaded at the link in the video description. Thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share.